We are talking about our basic needs as described by Dr. Glasser. I'll be taking a peek at our need for love and belonging. I'd like to start by offering a definition of a need. This probably isn't the only definition, but it works for my presentation today. A need is a thing that is necessary for an organism to live a healthy life. In the case of a need, a deficiency causes a clear adverse outcome, a dysfunction or death. Scurvy was the first recognized deficiency disease. We rarely see it today, but until the causes were understood, it took a deadly toll on sailors and others kept from fresh foods and fruits. Humans, some primates and guinea pigs, are not able to synthesize vitamin C, so a regular dietary intake is required. Without this regular intake, a deficiency in the vitamin results in the disease known as scurvy. In some ways, our need for love is like our need for vitamin C. We can't synthesize it for ourselves. This need needs to be met by connecting with others outside ourselves. The cause of the disease scurvy was not understood until James Lynn discovered that by providing lemons from Spain to the sick sailors, they would get better. When England went to war with Spain, lemons were unavailable, so limes from the English colonies in the Caribbean were substituted. This is how English sailors came to be called limeys. The important thing here is to see that when the deficiency is met by providing what is needed, the person gets better. Dr. Alan Shore, a recognized authority on child development and attachment theory, will briefly review some of the love and belonging experiences a child needs. The, the growth spurt of the brain is occurring from the last trimester of infancy through the second year. And at that time, the, the brain is more than doubling in size. It's connecting up. But its maturation is experience dependent. It's not as if the genes are encoding how everything is going to fall together. It needs certain types of experiences for the brain to grow. Certain experiences are needed. Those experiences are embedded in the relationship between the caregiver and, and the infant. If they're positive, if they're regulated, then we'll have an optimal situation. And literally, the potentiality of the genes will be carried forth to the fullest, so to speak. As if to say there is something in, there's something necessary that the, human need, that the human brain needs in terms of other human contact for it to grow. Because when the mother and the infant are in a dyadic dance, when they're attuned to each other, the work of Hofer is now showing that literally their psychobiological systems are co-regulating each other. One thing that usually happens in a child's early experience is they develop a sense of connection with other people. By caring about our infants and children, we not only teach them to accept care, we give them the experience of and the sense of being fundamentally connected with other people. It's this connection that underlies empathy and fundamentally underlies the control of aggression. When a need is not met, something bad happens. I don't believe that the love and belonging needs for these guys had been met early in life, nor were they being met at the time of this tragedy. They exemplify Dr. Glasser's statement that when our basic needs are not being met, the tendency is to turn to addictions, unloving sex, and violence. Another case of the same sort of deficiency disorder leading to senseless violence. This event had a profound effect on Dr. Nancy Buck, who had worked at this facility. This incident became the driving motivation for our webpage, Mental Health and Happiness. Dr. John Bowlby, founder of Attachment Theory after World War II, noticed that children kept in an orphanage often died of no apparent cause. They were fed, kept clean, but they didn't grow and often died. The failure to thrive diagnosis came from this sort of observation. Later in the 1990s, the sad pictures of the Romanian orphans revealed once again what Dr. Bowlby had seen. The reason these kids did not thrive was because they were deprived of human contact and were suffering from a deficiency of love and belonging. We can happily look back at how love and belonging needs can be met to prevent the deficiencies we saw. Mother is the first one to help us get our basic needs met, both physical and emotional through our connection with her. She is the first resident in our quality world. The dyadic dance that Dr. Shore described is the interconnection of mother and child, 
both physically and emotionally, that allows the child to feel felt, to grow in the experience of knowing that mother understands and cares. I think that phrase, feel felt, is so cool. Compliments of Dr. Dan Siegel. Here's an interesting true story about a mother's gaze. Pope John Paul II was being interviewed for a biography. His mother had died when he was young, and all he could re remember was what he called her loving gaze. The Pope sent an invitation to Dr. Dan Siegel, one of the founders of what is being called interpersonal neurobiology. The Pope wanted the Pope, uh, Dan Siegel to come to the Vatican for a private audience. Dr. Siegel was able to explain the neurobiology and what was happening in that dyadic dance called the mother's gaze. Dr. Siegel then led a conference for the College of Cardinals on parenting. Next, we have Dr. Alan Sroof from Minnesota, who has done major research in child development and attachment theory. He offers an insight that is highly relevant to our discussion. We're now looking at the romantic relationships of our young adults. And what we find is that parenting history, especially the the quality of early attachment experiences, predict things like the capacity for intimacy that the individuals bring to the relationship and the capacity to deal with emotions in the relationship. Those early secure loving contacts with our caregivers, usually a mother and father, provide the child with a foundation of being able to trust others and the world around him. Dr. Nancy Buck, who specializes in applying choice theory to parenting, tells us how early on we are trained to be either open to love and learn or to be closed for protection. As those love and belonging needs are met, the child can learn that emotions can be felt and regulated. The child learns to share what is being felt to get the support that comes from a caring other. The child learns that being open and trusting in relationships is possible and a good thing, and that in those loving relationships, emotions can be experienced and understood in a way that does not overwhelm. So to close, tell one story of yourself or someone you know whose need for love and belonging was met in a fresh way. Describe any changes in the person's quality of life when this happened. 